Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different and that is we're doing a tier list. I've always wanted to do one of these, but I didn't really know what to do it for. This was actually a video suggested by a channel member. His user is Dio1, so thank you very much for the suggestion. I did take it into consideration, and I think it's actually a really fun idea because I feel like I left off my Disco Elysium video not thoroughly explaining my feelings towards everything, and that's because I thought I'd probably do other videos on it. I realized, like, I think it's probably a good idea to almost say a farewell to the game by doing a tier list. I just have a lot of feelings on this game that I feel like I didn't properly express during my playthrough and during the outro. I feel like it was a little bit rushed, so I'm hoping that this video will explain more my thoughts on the characters and I might get into some story, I'm not sure, but I just think it's a fun idea to rank the characters from my favorites to my not so favorites. So. I won't make a super long intro this time. <laughs> Let's go ahead and show off my tier list that I made. So I actually didn't make this. It's by a user named Naoki104. <laughs> what? I think I mispronounced your name a lot, but that's okay. We have all, well, most of our characters here. I think some of them are missing, but for the most part, this is basically everyone that we met. So I went ahead and took the liberty of renaming all of the tiers here. So we start out at Hand in Marriage, please. And I think we already know who's going to go in that top spot. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and spoil it. I almost renamed this top tier Kim Kitsuragi and just put Kim at the top and <laughs> was not going to put anyone else there. <laughs> I think he deserves his own spot, to be honest. Um, the step below that is a solid friend. This is for characters that I thought were really, really cool and I would be friends with them in real life if I had the chance. Okay, I'm getting a blanket because I'm so cold, but if I turn off my AC, it's going to be too hot in my room to wear a hoodie. So. This is a mess. Anyway. And then the step below that is pretty okay. This this is for characters that I was like okay with, but not a huge fan, but I didn't, you know, I didn't hate them. I just thought they were like, yeah, they're all right. The middle tier here is not the worst, but could be better. This is mainly for characters that I thought needed maybe some more screen time or more improving. Maybe they were okay for the most part, but and the more I'm saying this, the more I realize pretty okay and this tier are basically the same thing. Let's just leave it. I don't feel like <laughs> renaming it. The step below that is forgettable. I'm sure not that many people will fall into this because a lot of the characters in the game are memorable, even if they are only there for a short amount of time. Below that is not a fan. Characters that either didn't like the voice acting, didn't like the writing, or I thought they were annoying to some extent. Below that, the last tier is Parish. Um, <laughs> I definitely have a few characters that come to mind. Yeah, th this is for characters that just did not need to exist or I want nothing to do with, etc. Yeah. <laughs> so let's just get right into it here. First off, we have... <laughs> Why did I already forget his name? Idiot Doom Spiral, I think. Is that his name? He didn't really have a name. He was sort of one of the hobos that we found. Talk to us about, you know, um, Tequila Sunset and uh, our shenanigans that we got up to. I don't know really where to put him. I honestly want to say forgettable, but I think he had some good stories that he was telling. And also, let me, let me just add a huge, huge disclaimer for actually you know, get further into it. This is all my opinion. You might have loved characters that I put in the parish category, and you might have hated characters I put in the hand and marriage place category. But there's a lot of characters in this game. You know, this is all my opinion. Anyways, <laughs> Idiot Doom Spiral. I'll just say not the worst, but could be better because um, we didn't really know anything about him. He was just sort of like a storyteller and that's it. Also, a lot of these characters I might be putting in certain categories because I personally didn't talk to them much. To me, if I didn't feel like talking to them much, I didn't think they were very interesting to begin with, so that's probably why. Egghead! This looks like a different picture than what was used in the game. I actually kind of like this a lot better because it looks like his um, his character model a little more, I think. Egghead is a solid friend, all right? We gotta put Egghead in the friend category. He's great. I loved all of his dialogue. I, I really liked Egghead. I like that he just sort of interjected whenever, just like, Egg! He, he's a caring guy, I think, underneath his weirdness. Next up, we have Don't Call Abigail, I believe. 
Um, this guy is forgettable. <laughs> there really wasn't anything to him unless I just missed stuff. If there was a whole side quest that I missed with him, maybe. Next up, we have Nia. I really, really like Nia. I'm going to go ahead and put her in the solid friend category. Um, I think I might end up putting her above Egghead just because she had more interesting dialogue, I think. And her voice was so relaxing. Like the whole scene where you go up into her little tower. Um, she kind of felt like Rapunzel a little bit. Like she's just kind of been isolated for a long time and doing her own thing. And I got to respect that, man. She's hustling. She's making money off of role players. Like it's kind of awesome. And also I will say the music that plays in her section is probably one of my favorites in the game because it's just so peaceful, it's so nice. And I also forgot to mention that I will be getting um, the vinyl of the soundtrack in the mail, hopefully this month, I think. I'm pretty tired. <laughs> Can anyone tell that this is a very last minute video? Next up, we have a cell. A cell, I think, was pretty okay. I wasn't like a huge fan of hers, but I think she's really sweet. Actually, the more I think about it, I might put her in a solid friend because there's scenes where she just talks about her life and she's really, she's really sweet. And I know I did miss a lot of dialogue with her, even though I did like her. I don't know. I think she's all right. I think she's pretty cool. Next up is Alan, Elaine. Um, he was one of the Hardy Boys. I'm just gonna go ahead and say not a fan. I didn't like him very much. I thought he kind of interjected backing up Titus every chance he could get and it just got so annoying. <laughs> I don't know, for some reason he just got on my nerves a lot. Next character is Alice. I think Alice is super underrated. I will say that I liked Alice a lot. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put her above Egghead because I really liked Alice. I liked calling her on the radio and seeing what she had to say because her voice was really relaxing. I thought it was sweet towards the end where she tried to get more involved in the case and really took on, you know, responsibility of trying to find like serial numbers and the history of the hanged man and all that. So she's a solid friend, man. Next up is Andre and I also really, really like Andre and I am honestly going to put him above Alice because Andre just cracked me up, man. Every piece of dialogue with him was so funny. His voice actor did a great job of making him like this punk, but kind of like a well-meaning punk, even though he wanted to set up a speed lab. We're gonna ignore that. I think he just the fact that he gets so overly excited about everything just really makes my day. And actually, I think I might put him above Nia just because he made me laugh a little more than Nia. Next character we have is Annette. And Annette is adorable. I really like Annette. Although I will put her below maybe... Maybe Nia. I think she's pretty high up there for me. And I'm now realizing a lot of characters I actually really enjoy. Although I do see some down here that we'll get to. We'll get to. But anyway, Annette. I think she had a lot of great dialogue with Harry and... But she also has a little bit like, of like a spunky side to her that kind of showed in some parts. Um, I will say I completely failed her and I did not let her go back inside. For some reason, I did not know that was even a possibility that you could like talk to her mom and convince her to let Annette go inside and in the warmth. So I definitely failed her a lot and I feel kind of bad. Next character is um, this girl that I guess I see Measurehead behind her. She was like one of his lackeys, like his girls. Um, and I will say she's very, very forgettable. I almost want to put her in not a fan just because she was really annoying, I remember. Uh, I'd, I'd say she's more or less just forgettable. I don't really have an opinion on her either way. Next character is Chester. <laughs> is, is that his name? Lester, is that his name? Okay, it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> okay, yeah. Wow, he has fan art. Look at that. Interesting. Yeah, this guy, Chester McLean. Okay, <laughs> let's go back. So Chester, I want to say he's just forgettable, but I also kind of remember his dialogue a little bit. When you call back to your station, he's there and he makes fun of you a lot. I don't, I don't know whether to put him in. He's not. He's not the worst but he could have more screen time is what it should say. <laughs> I don't know, he's not He's not the worst. Next character is Cindy the Skull. Cindy, I am not a fan. I know I'm sounding so angry, but I could not care less about Cindy at all. I don't know if I really expressed my distaste for her in the series, but I just don't. I found everything she said to be so pretentious and I know that was the point, but she's like, 
I found her voice to be just grating and annoying. I'm really <laughs> ragging into her a lot, but man, I just did not like her at all. Uh, next up, we have the cook in the Whirling in Rags. Uh, I want to say Gorazzi or something, but that was... That was like a nickname and not actually his real name. Oh god, I, I messed up. Um, I'd say he's also forgettable. Maybe less so forgettable than her. So he goes behind her. I don't know how to do rankings. <laughs> I've never done a tier list before, guys. Can you tell? He really didn't have any dialogue at all. I thought he was alright. Like, I, I'd like to know more about him, if possible. But he's just forgettable to me. <laughs> Next up is Gary, the crypto fascist. I'm just gonna go ahead right and say not a fan. Um, but at the same time, <laughs> he ranks pretty high to me. <laughs> And listen, before you get upset at me, I know he's a racist and a fascist, and I'm not going to keep him at this category, but to me, he cracked me up so much. His voice actor was hilarious. Um, if it's if he wasn't racist and wasn't fascist and wasn't just an asshole in general, he'd be in this category. He's pretty okay. Just for the simple reason of the anal beads. The anal beads. <laughs> I laughed so hard in this game and he was a huge reason for that so that for that reason he does kind of rank up there for me but at the same time he the first like the first thing he said to Kim was yellow man so for that reason he goes down here next character we have is Kuno S Kuno S also I'll put in the not a fan category I would have really really liked to see some character development for her I think she had a lot of potential to be very interesting as a side character, but she kind of just fell flat for me. I think it's because you couldn't talk to her at all. Like the only dialogue you really got from her was during your conversations with Kuno because she would always butt in. But yeah, at the same time, I'm just not a fan. I thought she was really annoying <laughs> all the time. It would have been very cool to see some sort of quest where you get to know her a little bit more, why she's so messed up, um, why is she so scary because I think Kuno implies that she kill a kid at some point so it's scary Elizabeth Elizabeth the gardener El Elizabeth the lawyer actually and I'm gonna put her above Chester here um at the start she would have been like a solid friend I love her voice actress she did a wonderful job and I like that she she did a really good job at making you feel like she's this innocent little gardener at first and then later on she's very stern and cold. So I think she did a good job at that. Every time I talked to Titus, she would annoy me. Um, so there's that. But also, spoiler for my playthrough. Spoilers. She died in my playthrough and I felt really, really bad. So that's why she kind of is a little higher up for me because I felt bad. And actually, you know what? I think she's going to be our first pretty okay person. All right, next up, DePaul. I think she's one of the mercenaries. Um, also, yeah, just perish. She's going to be our first just perish. She tried to kill Kim, and for that, she will never be forgiven. And also, her name, DePaul, reminds me of RuPaul's Drag Race. I don't know why. I do not like her whatsoever. I found her extremely annoying. <laughs> and she just, you know, yeah. That's it. And now I'm looking at this. Let us save the best for last. Even though we already know. I know he was next up, but let's just save him for last because I have a lot of feelings on Kim. Next is Kuno. Kuno... Okay. <laughs> Kuno really, really, really grew on me. And he actually ranks really high. I want to almost put him in... He could be better. Let's see. He could be better as a person. But as a character, I just find him very interesting. And at the end, he's a solid friend. And he gets kind of low ranking in a solid friend category, but he's still a solid friend. He's a solid friend to Kuno S as well. He really has her back all the time. They're kind of inseparable just because of their situation, I feel. And he's sort of, at the same time, too afraid to tell her no about certain things. and is honestly scared of her um but i think he really cares about her maybe as a sister friend figure if anyone has not seen it please look up the alternate ending where during the whole tribu tribunal kim can get shot 
And if you have a good relationship with Kuno, Kuno can actually be your partner for the rest of the game. I didn't play this on the channel, but I highly recommend watching a video on it if you haven't. And it really highlights that Kuno is actually a smart kid and he has a lot of potential. I'm kind of holding out hope for Kuno that he escapes his toxic family life and um, you know, his father I think played a huge role um, from what I can tell in his lifestyle and not giving a shit about anything and just sort of doing drugs because it sort of numbs the pain of his life. It's all really sad. And when I first met Kuno, obviously I couldn't stand him. I thought he was just the worst. And at that point, at the beginning, he would have been down here, maybe even the parish because I found him so annoying. But at the end, He's just a really a misunderstood kid. And I do personally have a huge soft spot for Kuno. And I did not think at the beginning of this game, I would feel this way about him because I just really hated him at first, but now he's just so good. Okay, we're getting into some spoilers here, but we have the communist guy. I don't remember him. I'm not a fan. <laughs> Honestly, I'm kind of debating putting him in forgettable or perish. I have a lot of feelings on the ending. Mainly, I didn't, I wasn't a huge fan of the reveal of this guy. I just, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I liked him less than Cindy, but I'm gonna put him below Cindy. I think I hated Cindy more than him. <laughs> I don't know why. I almost want to say forgettable, but I'm just gonna put him in. I'm not a fan because of what he did. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, spoilers: he is the actual murderer of the hangman. He was the one who did it, and it just felt a little bit disconnected from the rest of the game. At the same time, it made a lot of sense that it was him and he gave his reasonings and it, you know, his motive made sense. He was sort of just decaying on this island um, due to the phasmid poison as well. All right, we have a lot of characters left, so let's kind of speed this up a little bit more. I didn't want this video to be super long. Next up is Eugene. Eugene is kind of forgettable. At the same time, he's not the worst. I think, um, I think I'm gonna put him below Idiot Doom Spiral. He's kind of just like completely neutral for me. It's actually about it. Maybe I should put him in Forgettable to be honest. <laughs> I'd say he's above her for sure. Um, but uh, eh. <laughs> I like his art. I like how he looks. He has a very cool design. Next is Everett Claire. Everett Claire really made me laugh. It's the same thing with Gary like he would be kind of up here in terms of as a character um and his role in the story <laughs> but he is just the worst he's just the worst it's kind of weird how it works because he I think has kind of good intentions for Martinez but just is the just the worst just the way he talks is just Harry I <laughs> I really just don't know where to put you, do I? Let's go down here. He's not forgettable. He's definitely not forgettable. But, uh, I'd say I liked him more than Gary, but I don't know where to put him. He's not the worst, but he could be a lot better. And I can't believe I'm putting him here. Yeah, he's kind of high up there for me. I like how his whole sequence was sort of like a boss battle in the game, even though there's not technically a boss battle, except maybe the tribunal and Ruby. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Next is Angus. I, I feel bad calling him Fat Angus, but you know, he deserves to be kind of higher up on the list to me because he got really screwed over by his friends a lot of the time. I don't think Titus really bullied him very much, but a lot of the other guys did. And Lizzie especially, she like called him fat like all the time. And it, it kind of made me sad. Like guys can be fat shamed too. It's not just girls. And it kind of bugs me a little bit. So for that, I'd say he's he's above Lizzie for me. Just, <laughs> and it's almost kind of like a pity ranking. So he goes above Lizzie for me. I don't know why, but I'm just gonna leave it and not question it. Next up is piss F word. <laughs> um, I'd say he's, he was kind of funny. Um, he's not the worst above Chester, but below Everard. And I feel like I'm just completely messing up my whole ranking here. Next is the this girl. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna go right ahead and say forgettable. She was the girl in the frit store, and she just was annoying. <laughs> I'm gonna put her kind of. I don't know if I should put her not a fan, but more or less, she's just forgettable to me. Next character is fuck the world. 
This guy also same thing as piss guy. I'd say maybe I liked him a little less than this guy. I don't know why. Maybe his voice just kind of annoyed me. I'm kind of lazy with these two. I just don't really know where to put them because they were in like one scene and that's it. Okay, so next we have Gart. Gart, I love, I love Gart very, very much. And I know um, some people might be weirded out that I'm putting him so high on the list here, but he really cracks me up all the time. He just gives off this Squidward energy and I love that about him. As Harry, if you're nice to Gart, he will start to like you a little bit and he'll, you know, like your karaoke if you do a good job. So for that reason, he gets he gets really high on the list for me. Um, I just think he's, he's just really funny. Next character we have is Gaston and he's pretty okay. I'd say he's above Angus. I, I kind of want to say forgettable at the same time, but I think he's pretty okay because I do actually remember him. He's pretty okay. I wouldn't say he's anything to write home about, but... I liked, um, I liked talking to him and I felt bad when Renee died and he was sort of left alone just on the bench. It's pretty sad. Next character is Glenn and Glenn, I'm just not a fan. Oh, um, I, I want to say forgettable, but I don't, I don't know. Um, to me personally, he was forgettable. Um, I do remember Titus saying that he really cared about him and he was really upset when when he died, I believe. Next up, we have the Hanged Man, Ellis. I'm half tempted to put him in the Parish category because he already did. I'm not a fan either. From the recordings, he seemed like an asshole and I don't really understand what Clase saw in him. I'll say I, I liked him. He gets a, a pity switch above um, the guy who killed him. <laughs> I like the whole mystery surrounding him, um, but from the sounds of it, he wasn't a great guy. Next is Jean Vigmer. I think that's his last name. Either way, not really sure. He's pretty okay to me. It wasn't anything that I was super in love with with him. I know a lot of people actually really like him. Like, I went on Tumblr just to see like fan art and what people were saying about the game. And a lot of people like this guy and I don't really understand it. His, his voice actor just... <laughs> Wow, he went for it, didn't he? Um, I don't know if I liked his voice actor or if I thought it was too ridiculous. Either way, he's pretty okay. Um, I will say that he put up with a lot of Harry's bullshit, and I do feel kind of bad for him because, you know, he he had a rough go of it. Um, like, the whole precinct kind of suffered because of all the nonsense that Harry did, so... Um, I do feel bad, and at the end of the day, he's probably a solid friend to Harry. Like objectively, he's probably he's probably there for him when he needs to be, and he did at the end kind of help him into the motor carriage, and it was a nice scene. But to me, he was pretty okay. Feel free to disagree, and a lot of people might get kind of angry about that. Next up is Joyce. Joyce, I liked more than Everard, but I also wasn't really a huge fan of talking to her. She kind of is on the same level for me. It's sort of completely different. Like, she's a good person, but I didn't really enjoy talking to her. Everett's, in my opinion, not a very good person, but I really like talking to him. Maybe I'm giving her the benef benefit of the doubt. I don't know. She definitely gave off a very, like, James Bond MI6 um, category. <laughs> her. She gives off very her energy. <laughs> so that's who she reminds me of. I don't know why. But anyway, yeah, she gets this rank. <laughs> Next character is Jules. I really, really like Jules. I'd say he's a solid friend. I think he goes maybe below Alice for me. You could tell he's been doing his job for a very, very long time and just sort of doesn't really care anymore. <laughs> um, and I think he tries to cover for Harry at some points and just feels some sympathy for him. I just really like talking to him. He he's a good dude, to be honest. Clazier, Clazier. I don't know where to put her. I honestly want to say she's not the worst, but she could be better. <sighs> she's one of those characters that really could be anything for me. I am very much chaotic neutral on her. I'd say I like her more than these characters. And that doesn't mean she's necessarily a better person than any of them. I just feel like I like them more than these characters, but not more than them. 
and that's really how I have to rank it because I don't know how to do it otherwise. I think she made a lot of really stupid decisions and at the end really screwed over basically everyone that she came in contact with. I know she manipulated us kind of every step of the way, but you know, I don't really feel that bad about not arresting her. That's all I have to say. I think she has a lot to work on in her personal life, you know? <laughs> like, get it together a little bit, you know? That's all I'm saying. Um, Courtenaire, scab leader slash uh, mercenary leader, second in command. He can also perish. I don't really care. Um, he, racist idiot, um, try to kill us. Basically, all of the mercenaries can go in this category. And at the same time, while we're at it, how about we put him down there too? <laughs> how about we just put him down there? Because he's he's gonna go down there anyway. And these people felt very real and very scary, and I enjoyed them because of that. But at the same time, as people perish, I don't care. Moving on. Next, we have Lena. Lena is also just a solid friend, man. I'd say she goes maybe above Nia. I, I'd say I rank Lena pretty high. She's just the sweetest, like, most well-meaning character, and you really, like, how can you not like Lena? I mean, come on. From the start, she's very, like, overly understanding of Harry, even though you're just this bumbling idiot all the time. She just has a soft spot for you, and she ends up giving you a pen. It's just... <laughs> Next character is Easy Leo. Leo, Leo, Leo. A solid friend, man. Just... I'm gonna put him below Lena for the simple fact that we don't have as much screen time with Leo as we do with her, but as a character, I just adore Leo so much. His voice is so sweet, and he's just happy about everything ever, even though, like, he could be homeless and still be like, I'm just the happiest guy in the world, because it's just, I love him so much. Yeah, if we had more screen time, he could easily be, like, right here, but... Yeah, I'd say he maybe is below Nia because she has more screen time as well. And I do really enjoy Nia a lot. So this guy I actually did not meet in my playthrough. I think he his name is like super mega rich light bending guy or something. Super rich guy. Light bending rich guy. <laughs> yeah. So mega rich light bending rich guy. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know really anything about him. Um, not really sure who he is. I just, I think I saw like one clip of him. So for that reason, just, um, he's very much in the middle for me. I'll put him kind of below everyone just because I don't really know who he is. I didn't really meet him. Next is the two twins, um, Lillian's sons. And I think we can do them both at the same time. Um, I'll just go ahead and say forgettable. Both of them were forgettable to me. Um, I just, yeah, there really wasn't any interesting dialogue with them, and they were adorable, like, their voices were so cute, don't get me wrong, but to me, just kind of forgettable. Then I believe this is Lillian's daughter, but I also think that is a different portrait than the one they use in the game, um, but I'm pretty sure that's Lillian's little girl, and she is adorable, I will say, below Kuno, just because I don't know her very well. I love her little toy. Her voice actress is adorable, just so cute. She's definitely not above any of these characters for me, but I just found her so cute. Okay, next up, I forgot his name. <laughs> I'm also just gonna say forgettable. And I know he had a lot of dialogue, but I guess I'll put him as being less forgettable than I don't, I don't even know what this ranking is anymore. What am I talking about? Next up, we have Measurehead. Measurehead, just perish. I don't care about Measurehead. Every time I talked to him, I dreaded it because I found him so annoying. He has this god complex about himself and just, oh my god, so annoying. It was so hard not to skip a lot of his dialogue. Like, honestly, I can't type. No, simply perish. That's it. Just die. <laughs> I don't like Measure Head. Um, then we have this little boy. <laughs> um, who are you? I'm gonna go right ahead and put you in the forgettable category. Um, I believe this is Trant's son. Trant titles stem. Where is he? That there he is. I believe that's his son. Um he he's I don't think he has any dialogue. I don't even know if I met him in my playthrough, but I have seen pictures. <laughs> don't think he says anything. We're fine here. Okay, moving on. Judith, 
Judith Minot, I think. Uh, she's also going to be in the pretty okay category. I think I like her more than Jean, um, but less than Clasier. <laughs> I don't really know. Um, she also didn't have that much screen time, but I do like she was kind of warm hearted. Let's put her below Jean, just because he made me laugh more than she did. Um, and that's really the only reason I'm ranking him above her. Next is Morel. Morel, I will say, not the worst, but could be better, simply because he associates himself with Gary. <laughs> I do like him more than all these characters here. And I, I want to say maybe, maybe he's pretty okay. I did like his voice. He kind of looks like, um, oh my god, what's his name? Clancy Brown. He looks like Clancy Brown a little bit, doesn't he? Okay, he's pretty okay, but he's below Lizzie for me. Eh, no. Uh, wow, I'm really messing this up. Okay, I'm just gonna put him here. Why not? He's pretty okay to me. I think he could be better if he wasn't associated with, with Gary here. Like, like, calm out a little bit, you know? Please don't let your friends continue to just have these really stupid ideals. Um, next we have Lillianne. I think Lillianne is pretty okay. I'd say she's maybe below morale for me, just because I don't know much about her. I know there is a, a chance to romance her and go on a date with her, but I never really had that opportunity because I didn't talk to her when Kim wasn't around. And if Kim's around, it makes it too awkward. So, but for right now, she kind of gets this like, I'm okay with her. Um, category. I like that she has fish hooks for earrings. I think that's kind of badass. I love her art. All, like, all these characters are drawn so well. Next up is this guy. I don't really know who this is. So obviously he goes in the forgettable category. Um, I believe he's like the doctor you call um, back at your station. So he's like Precinct 41's something. Lazarus, I think. Is that what it was called? I don't remember. Next we have Noid. I like Noid a lot. But I will say he's just sort of on the pretty okay category to me. Um, I, I'd rank him below Lillian. I will say I really like his style, like his whole vibe. It's very um, David Bowie. I, I like the necklace, like the choker necklace, like his hair that's slicked back. It's very like um, 80s, 70s style. And from my bangs, you can tell. I like that style a lot. Didn't really talk to him very much. I know there was a lot of dialogue I missed with him, but overall, he's pretty okay. I like I like Noid. It's really his look that kind of excels him higher up on the ranking scale for me. Next is the Pale Driver. I will say not a fan. I liked her even less than I liked Cindy, and that's saying a lot. I just could not stand her voice. Her voice was just grating to listen to. Nothing she really said mattered, and I'm so mean. I'm so mean, I'm sorry, but I have zero tolerance for her. I don't know, if does anyone else just not like her at all? <laughs> Next character is the pigs. The pigs. Um, I'd say she is not the worst. And listen to my reasoning, please. I thought her whole sequence was really, really cool. I do feel really bad for her, though, because she has dementia, all these health problems. Overall, her just mental state just deteriorated and I genuinely feel like she just needs help. She needs some sort of psychiatric help. Like, kind of get your life together a little bit. Maybe don't point guns at random people on boardwalks. Next up is Plaisance. Plaisance, not a fan. But I did like her more than I liked these characters. Um... So I don't know what that says about how I feel about her. Anyone who just profits off of child labor without really giving anything in return to her poor daughter who's out in the cold and is honestly kind of afraid of her own mother, which is really sad. Um, yeah, I think she deserves to be in this category here. Next, we have Racist Lorry Driver. I think we all know he is the worst character of them all. <laughs> I have no other way to describe him other than that. He is simply the worst. I loved that scene where Kim just went off on him. Like, the first thing that he says to Kim, Kim immediately picks up on that and is like, Shut the fuck up. <laughs> really was one of the first scenes that where I was like, I love Kim so much. Oh my god. So I feel like his character is very realistic in that his 
racism is sort of said in like a subtle way, a subtle jab at first to sort of mask his true intentions, but at the same time you can instantly pick up on what he's trying to say. Next up is Renee. Renee, not the worst, could be better. I like that just is the first thing that came to my mind. Um, I will say I liked him more than these characters here, but eh. I think he had a lot of flaws and personally he was kind of a an asshole, like a huge asshole, and Gaston even talked about how this guy was just, he wasn't a nice guy, like, but they still, you know, they loved each other, they were there for each other, so his death was was pretty sad just from what Gaston was telling us. It made it kind of sad. I Not that I really cared much for him. Uh, next up is the Fortress Accident um, radio lady, <laughs> and um, I, I don't know where to put her. I'd say she's... I, I want to put her in solid friend. <laughs> but um, I'm going to put her right here. Right here. Because I absolutely adored her. Simply for the fact of her accent, her voice. Okay, we're nearing the end here. We only have a few characters left. Next up, uh, I don't know who this is. <laughs> for that reason, he gets put in the completely... And utterly forgettable. I don't know who this is. <laughs> I don't know who this is. I think he's part of this whole group, like the Doom Spiral, the Abigail guy. I don't know if I actually talked to him in my playthrough. That's kind of embarrassing. Roy, Roy, Roy. Uh, he's pretty okay. I'd say he's eh, like right here. Yeah, I actually like like his design and everything. He looks very almost alien. And he kind of gives off that vibe when you go into his pawn shop. You're kind of like in this whole other world and it's just you're on this psychedelic trip. I like listening to his backstory and all that. And I'm now realizing, is that long hair behind him? Or is that just like a shadow? Is that is his head like bald or is his hair like flowing like that? And now that it has completely thrown me off and I don't know how to feel. Next is Ruby. Ruby is kind of up there for me um more than i thought she would be i think she could be better she's definitely not the worst and i um actually feel kind of bad for her to be honest because a lot of her friends screwed her over and i don't think she really did much wrong except make a pale emitter and try to kill two police officers and also cover up a murder and drug trafficking but besides that we all have our flaws um i think she could be a lot better as a person but as a character i liked her but she's definitely not my least favorite like as far as villains and i won't even really call her a villain she's she's pretty up there for me i like her more than joyce i think her sequence was more entertaining than anything we did with most of these characters um except Everart. I think Everart was probably one of the most entertaining in the game, but Ruby was pretty cool to me. I liked her design. Next we have Ceiling. Ceiling I like. I think he's a solid friend to be honest. I'm gonna put him uh, right in the middle between a cell and Egghead. He's just like a well-meaning, kind of a goofball, like he sort of hypes you up no matter what you do and it's just really funny. I'm glad I didn't like try to bully him into giving me money because I would have felt really bad about that. Definitely wouldn't have minded more um, scenes with him, although sometimes he could be a little much. Like his lines had um, a lot of energy to them and sometimes I got kind of tired with characters like that. I think that's partly why Kim was always just so nice to talk to because he's just this level-headed character who is very constant. And I, oh my god, I have a lot of feelings for Kim, okay? This video has gone on long enough, let's keep going here. Um, so we have this guy, a uh, dock worker who was sleeping. Forgettable. Next we have Smoker on the balcony. He was interesting to say the least. I will say he's pretty okay to me. Um, probably gonna put him right there. I liked him more than most of these characters. I thought his dialogue was pretty funny. There was that whole thought that you gained by talking to him, uh, the homosexual underground. Um, and I do know that I tried to do that um, thought and I didn't complete it by the end of the game, but if you did, you could also find out that Kim is also canonically gay. So that's pretty interesting. Um, I'm really sad that I missed that in my playthrough, and um, but I did see that like later on, like what that thought actually turned out to be. So 
I think it's really fitting that that's how Kim tells you. It's not really this huge like reveal. He's just sort of like, yeah, I'm gay. Like, well, let's move on. <laughs> um, and it also begs the question, like, is Harry bi? I don't know, because it seems like his brain was sort of malfunctioning when it came to this guy here. Next is Suna. I think Suna is also going to be in the pretty okay category. She's probably higher than Clazier to me for some reason. I actually ended up really liking Suna, but I don't know if I'd put her up here. And now that I'm looking at this, I think I'm going to move Lillian's daughter down here. <laughs> I think I'll put her maybe next to her mom here. Um, just because like... I don't know. We didn't get that much dialogue with her, even though she is sweet. I feel like maybe she just should be in this category here. Um, but as far as Suna goes, I like that um, moralist side quest with her where she set up the whole communications thing with the moralist um, uh, freaking coalition and all that. So she's one of those characters where I'm like, I hope she does well in life. I hope she gets what she wants because I think she deserves it. Oh god, next is this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tempted to just put him here. I did not like care for him at all. Simply perish would be the best way to describe how I feel about him. Sunday friend, I don't know what his actual name is. I forgot. He was so fucking annoying. I'm very aggressive about how I feel about him. Um, maybe it's because I met him when I was on my period and I was kind of upset about everything in the world. But overall, God, I didn't like him. Um, I guess I'll put him above the rest just because I don't think he's racist, but you never know. This section is really reserved for the racists, although Gary would be down here, but he did kind of own up to his mistake when it came to Kim, even though it doesn't really change anything because, you know, how long is it going to take before he just reverts back to what he was saying before? <laughs> so he goes in this category and I was honestly waiting to rank him because I I cannot stand him. Yeah, I don't know if anyone else feels as strongly as I do about this character, but ooh, he got under my nerves or under my skin, on my nerves. Sylvie, I don't know why I wanted to call her Sadie for a second, but eh, no, let me put her a little bit higher. I'll say she's above these guys because we did have some dialogue with her. I felt honestly terrible for what she went through. She kind of deserves better. I feel like she's just this, this girl trying to do her job and Harry was just the worst <laughs> to her. So for that reason, I feel like she deserves better. Uh, next is the crab man in the church. I'll go ahead and say also just kind of forgettable. Um, maybe less so than the other characters. I have been talking so much that my throat hurts so bad, man. Mm, he's just kind of like, meh to me. Um, he had sort of an interesting backstory, but to be honest, I forgot basically all of it. So how interesting could it really have been? I feel like I'm being unnecessarily harsh to all these characters here, but that's this is just how I feel. Again, it's just my opinion. Titus. Next is Titus. And I will say he is pretty okay. Um, probably going to rank him a little bit lower on the pretty okay category, um, but he's... He's not, he's not bad. The way we left things off, I do appreciate Titus a lot more. He was trying to keep crime off of the streets in Martinez, trying to do his best. So I kind of admire him about that. He did lie about a lot of things and he was an asshole most of the time. But at the end, he commended us for trying to save his men and being brave enough to stand up to the tribunal. I wasn't a huge fan of his voice actor because I felt like I could not take him seriously half the time because of the way he delivered his lines. I don't know, he really went overboard with the whole gruff, uh, angry sounding guy. And uh, yeah, I think he tried a little too hard. Next is Tommy. Tommy is a pretty okay dude. I kind of want to put him in the solid friend category, maybe below Kuno. Um, just because he really tried to stick up for Ruby and I felt so bad betraying him at the end. I really did. I did not want to do that at all. I think he deserved a lot more than that, you know? Down to the last few people, I'm gonna kind of skip through some of these really fast. First of all, Mac Torres and something? He's forgettable to me, you know? Like, I know him and Chester kind of had the same amount of screen time, and I should probably put Chester down here as well, but I'm gonna put him uh, right above here. Um, and actually, I'm gonna switch this guy to not a fan, just because I found him kind of annoying. Just, you know, 
didn't like him at all. So I guess I'm, that means I'm just not a fan. But Mac, yeah, didn't really have that many lines. I had to voice him for a lot of it, so I don't even think I really heard what he sounded like in my playthrough. Then we have Trant Heidelstein? Something? I don't know. He's also sort of in the category of... I want to say forgettable, but at the end he kind of made me laugh a little bit. So we're going to stick with not the worst, but could be better. And I'll put him... Right here. Between... Um... Skull wannabes and Sylvie, I think. That's probably a good spot for him. Yeah. Next is the washerwoman. I don't know if she actually had a name, but I'm gonna say she's pretty okay. I think the fact that she let us stay in her house free of charge every night was pretty freaking awesome. I think I'll put her above these guys. Um, yeah, I like I liked her. And she has a soft spot for Ruby, so I could feel a lot of compassion within her, and I liked her a lot for that. A uh, man on the waterlock. <laughs> I can't believe I remember all these characters' names. He is pretty damn okay because he gave us a slice of salami, and personally, I love salami. It's one of my favorite like lunch meats, so he goes pretty high up here <laughs> on the list for me. Maybe a little too high just because he was literally only there for one day. But I liked him better than Titus simply for the fact that he gave us a slice of salami. Billy Mejong. I felt so bad for her. I really felt bad for her at the end. Her husband and all that. Just I think it was funny at the beginning how it sort of um, subverted your expectations a little bit with her character. Where she was, you thought she was just this one-off like, oh, I can help you find your missing husband. And then it turns out her husband's actually missing and dead. And you have to break the news to her as a police officer. And it's horrible. All right, so we've made it to the end. This video has been unnecessarily long. I'm, I've tried to trim it up as best as I can. And I know I sort of lost steam towards the end. That's just because I've been talking a lot and my mouth hurts. Anyway, Harry, Harry Dubois, Harrier, our man Harry. I will say I want to put him up here, but it feels like I'm kind of tooting my own horn a little bit because Harry is basically you. You have the choice on how you want Harry to be, what kind of person you want him to be, you know? So it, it's hard because Harry can be either like the worst of the worst, like a fascist, horrible person, or he could be a solid dude. So I think it's hard to really tell where I want to put him. But for me, it's it definitely not, I wouldn't marry him, but my Harry was very well-meaning. Um, tried to do things the right way, tried to take the case seriously. I was sort of boring cop a lot of the time. For the most part though, I was sorry cop because I think it's really easy to be sorry cop on your first playthrough just because you hear all these things that Harry did before you took control of him and you're like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Like, I did that. I feel so bad. So I think I'm gonna put him solid friend. He's the top of the solid friend category here. And last but not least, the man, the star of the show, our boy Kim Kitsuragi. And we know he has to go in that top category, man. It's just no questions asked. And for that reason, we are going to be renaming this category Kim Kitsuragi. He is the best of the best. He is the best character in this game, no questions asked. Okay, I will not be accepting criticism. You can criticize literally any of the rest of these categories here except for this one he is literally the best character one of my favorite fictional characters in any game any movie that i've seen in a long long time he is just so good the writing for him absolutely amazing he's so patient with you um harry i mean through the whole game really it's like there's it's kind of hard for you to make kim really hate you because kim is just such a patient understanding guy he's been working in the rcm and this whole field for so long that he's seen so many people come and go and he's seen the toll that this police force really takes on people so i think that is one of his reasons for being so lenient towards harry because he understands why harry is the way that he is and i think that level of understanding really sets kim apart from everyone else because not only is he so understanding and caring and just 
amazing, but he he has a great sense of humor too. One of my favorite things about him is that he has this dry sense of humor and he cracks jokes with you in the crime scene. He he wants to take things seriously, but at the same time, you know, he has that personality to him deep down where he does make these dry jokes and like he he's sarcastic. But at the end of the day, he really does care about Harry. He cares about Martinez and Revachol and wants what's best for the city. And he is also a huge freaking dork and I love him. This the whole dance sequence in the church really showed that he is deep down this huge nerd. I think a lot of people would describe him as being intimidating, but deep down he loves his car. He's this huge like tech nerd and just it's just you want him as a friend in real life like who wouldn't want kim to be your best friend your main motivation in this game at least to me was to not disappoint kim the whole one of the whole reasons i took the case so seriously most of the time was because i didn't want to disappoint kim i wanted him to like me i wanted him to respect me as a police officer and most of all i wanted him to trust me and at the end of the game during the tribunal if you get that little plus two, Kim truly trusts you, it makes everything in the game feel so rewarding because that was one of my main goals was to make him like me. And I truly love Kim Kitsuragi, his voice actor, Julian something. I forget his name. I'll put it up on the screen. He did such a great job bringing him to life and I truly feel like the game would not be the same without the voice acting. And I know I picked on some of them, but all the voice actors in this game did a really good job. Um, a lot of them I had some, you know, some of them I had some gripes with, but overall just everyone did such a good job, you know? And that is why Kim Kitsuragi deserves his own tier slot at the very, very top because he is just the best. So yeah. That is my tier list. As you can see here, I don't know if many people would agree with how I rank these people, but I think I don't think I'd really change anything. I think I'm I'm pretty much okay with how I rank these guys. As for the forgettable category, a lot of the people even in this one, I still remember, like I still remember their names. So that really shows that this game did such a great job with its characters and I really had a hard time dividing a lot of them so yeah that was my tier ranking i hope you guys enjoyed this video i know it's very different from videos that i do for the most part but i like the idea of trying something different and new so if you want me to try doing this again sometime want me to try different videos maybe i'd be totally up for that because this is a lot of fun feel free to disagree let me know who you would switch around or if you want to do this yourself i'll leave the link to this tier list in the description so you know, switch it around, see what you would like to do. Thank you so much to my members, um, especially DO1 for suggesting that I do this in the first place. You guys are great. Um, thank you so much to all my members, seriously. Like you guys are amazing and you blow me away that you, you know, support me like that. So if you would like to become a channel member, um, you can hit the join button down below. You get like cool little badges. And I also make a bunch of community posts um, for members only talking about behind the scenes stuff and, you know, videos that I'm planning on doing in the future, stuff like that. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like or subscribe if you're new, because I'd love to have you stick around and watch me rank some characters and play video games as well. I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.